sorry about that. <laughs> we had some technical difficulties. Howdy, howdy. This is Clara Lawrence. I am jumping in for Rhonda Dracula so she can have the evening off. We are going to work with Illuminati dyes today. And I'm going to show you how I mix them. And we're also going to mix up uh, another product, Resin Art. And y'all can use that as alcohol inks. So I wanted to talk a little bit about that. First off. You need to check out Rhonda's site. Obviously, if you're here, you're familiar with RK3 Designs, and she offers a huge line of stone coat products, and she is the wizard of stone coat. Well, wizard. Is wizard, I guess, a general term for both male and female? I guess so, because Mitch is also a wizard, too. So maybe they're co-wizards. I don't know. I mean, so. Anyway. <laughs> so. Give you the backstory about how I started out doing alcohol dyes. What it is is I do illustration type work, um, different graphics, and I mess around with all different kinds of mediums. So alcohol inks is one of them, resin of course is one of them, paints, acrylic markers, all kinds of stuff. And alcohol inks themselves are not light fast or at least not all of them and at the time I started my journey a lot of them weren't so I started messing around with alumilite dyes because they're meant to go into resin so naturally they're light fast and they work really really well with alcohol so I started tinkering around with them they're very very concentrated so I will tell you this much it does not take a lot to make your colors and it, like give you an example I would have a palette dish that I would paint off of you know for paints and I'm like well I'm wondering how well this will do and act as like a watercolor and I put a little blob in you know my trays and stuff a year later this stuff was not dry so that's why we do, do just a little bit of it otherwise your piece will never dry what you got there Mikey not much okay sorry about the delay guys <laughs> running into technical difficulties in the beginning yes but we will run as long as we can, maybe uh, even an extra 10 minutes if it works out really well. So we'll, we'll make up for that lost time. So that's on us. We were trying to, we had a hard time connecting and stuff, but we got it fixed now. Hello and, everyone in chat. And hello and welcome. Um, I'm hoping the moderators like Erica and Vamp will be in. I know Vamp is a little under the weather right now, but Erica is always, always jumps in, or at least almost always jumps in. And hopefully Rhonda will just take chill and relax tonight. I got this. <laughs> As she would say. Okay. So back on to the Illuminate Dice. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. Oh, you look like you had something to say. Anyway, the, the voice in the background is Mikey. That's my son. He helps me out in the background. No, I'm not. We, we, we know you're not. You're not helping. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. He's what I call a poker. You know, one of those kind of people that instigates trouble. You know, and it has little lady horns, you know, but he's a good, good soul. Anyway, back to the alcohol inks. Let me show you guys a little bit of what I do. So this is some of the stuff that I work with. So I like showing a bunch of different techniques. I start messing around with this. Like, for example, this background here has interference mica powders in it. And I just have layers and layers and layers of different kinds of inks, markers, and things like that. And I will, you're in, I've got a glacial dragon over there that I'm working on, and it's got chunks of crystals and stuff. It's in the ugly stage. It's not that pretty right now. <laughs> or you're definitely not finished. But I also mess around with, as you guys know, the uh, what Keith is calling the Clara Marble. Um, so that's all you need to know about that, I guess. <laughs> so let's get started with the mixing. You want to um, bring it down so it's a little closer? No, like, I don't know. Maybe a, you want to do an overhead? All right. Okay. So these bottles here can be had on Amazon and most hobby stores. They're little small, like one ounce bottles. They have like a little needle tip applicator on top and very inexpensive you can get them taller like i'll sometimes get the larger size that i do alcohol but it still has a fine point on it so i can apply it where i want to but i use the little guys for colors now if you've got a big project you might want to mix up a larger bottle so there's that 
<laughs> Thank you for not showing that part. <laughs> I was tempted. You were tempted? Okay. So I will fill in my bottle to about the shoulder part of, I guess it's called the shoulder. That's what I refer to it as. With 91% isopropyl alcohol, same stuff you use with the resin. So you don't have to get any new products. A little bit more there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and fill up the second one because I know it's gonna happen. But this time, well, the second one's gonna go a little bit less and I will tell you why later. Okay. We have a cat and there's a hair, of course. Okay, so with this size of a bottle, I will use, I would say no more than four or five drops. The stuff, like I said, stuff is super concentrated. Okay, I've got red, green, and blue. And these are all the aluminum light colors. And Rhonda sells them as individuals and as kits. Kits, kits. There we go. People are liking Clara Marble, by the way. They are. The name of it. Oh, <laughs> say thank you, Key. <laughs> All right. Your drops may vary from like a little drop to a big fat drop, and it's just the way it goes. If you need to be real precise, uh, one tip you can do uh, that I can give you, especially when it's cold, is you can put these into like a little hot water bath or a warm water bath for just like a minute or so and it'll loosen up the solution. I do recommend putting in um, either a little stainless BB, inexpensive, or you can get paint mixing balls because the solution's kind of thick and sometimes it'll go down to the bottom, especially if you haven't used it in a while. So we're gonna mix this up. Definitely put your finger over the bottle, shake it up. And then I usually run a line on a paper towel just to make sure that I've got the color I'm interested in getting. So that is what we're gonna work on today. It's kind of a smoky, um, kind of brownish, black, mostly black. But if you notice the Illuminate bottles are a little different. This is the older bottle and this is the newer one. Both will work. It's the same thing. These are a little bit easier to get a single drop out of, but you can do it out of these. Unfortunately, you had to cut the tap, uh, you know, the top on it. You just got to be careful. All right. So that is how we mix up those guys. And I've already got blue fingers again. <laughs> Does not take long for me. Oh my gosh. I should wear gloves. Okay. So the next one we're going to work with is resin art. And resin art is like a pre-dissolved paste. And it looks like coffee grinds. If you can see that now the color on it is a lot like a mica powder I feel like I'm doing a sample for like eye makeup so you can get that nice shimmer and it's they have a lot of super bold colors so if you need bold colors this is definitely something to add to your collection and you wonder why you're always blue I, in multiple colors <laughs> and my clothes okay so this is a hard one. Go back to your uh, cooking days. One heaping scoop, second heaping scoop. Does it have to be real precise on this one? No, it's a lot like putting the mica powders into your alcohol solution for spritzing. If you want a little bit more color or saturation of color, you add a little bit more to it. And then the smaller portion of the alcohol, I just pour in most of it. Actually, probably all of it. And this is a paper cup, and it's a paper cup with no lining in it whatsoever. And these guys are great, especially if you need to mix up just a, like a little bit of color. And you can already see how brilliant that color is. What color is that again? This one is Wild Jasmine. Wild Jasmine. And Wild Jasmine and Just Resin Mango. Gorgeous combination. I mean, that stuff is magic. And then I just pinch the cup and carefully pour it back in. Okay. 
you'll usually end up with a little bit of product in the bottle or in the cup sorry and then I'll add a little bit of alcohol to that swish it around and add that to my bottle which is one of the reasons why I don't fill it all the way to the top okay now I need to talk to you about sealing on this one especially with the resin art um, because it's a mica powder that's that's in there when you've applied and worked with your piece now this is gorgeous stuff when you uh, mess around with any of the alcohol dye techniques but when the alcohol evaporates you pretty much got a loose mica powder on the top of it barely grazing the surface we'll pick up the mica powders and then we'll also leave that streak where you grazed it so this is where it's really important to have that piece of artwork and you put a couple of seal coats of either some type of uh, a clear spray that works with your resin um, in a matte finish and you just do a couple of light coats and it just keeps it sitting still until you have the opportunity to put your resin on top and I wouldn't wait around too long like a couple of days kind of thing in case somebody does brush up against it because you don't want that to happen okay so there is that is there any questions about the mixing uh, don't nope. you see no, actually. Nope. Pretty okay. straightforward. All right. Let's get some stuff out of the way and we'll do some color dabbling. With all my colors on my hands, this would be interesting. Okay. So we're going to put you in the overhead and I think that should be nice and centered. This aside. Oh, orientation block. That's mm -hmm. okay. Are we good? It'll be upside down. It's gonna be upside down? That's okay. Oh well it's a flat surface. So it should be good. Yeah. Yeah, it should be good. Okay, so this is a resin art color. Uh I know that Rhonda's does sell some of the resin arts, but if you can't get a hold of that, Erica has like a world supply of different colors. And I'm gonna be also working on a book of different ways to combine the resin art colors. You know, I'm always looking for, you know, more bang for your buck. So this one here is called Green Apple. And that's the color, like the shimmer that it gives off. Really pretty stuff. Um, that one I don't have named. <laughs> but it's a nice green. I just mixed names. it the other too day. Too blue. And then this one is a black vi uh, violet, which is mostly black and a little bit of violet in that. All right. So we are going to apply just a ribbon of alcohol. And again, I'm using 91% alcohol. And then I get some colors down there just to have something to work with. And now I'm a little bit of a slob when I come to doing my work, but I'm okay with that. Because it ends up turning out right. At least I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> but already that, that green is super pretty. And then what you're doing here with the, uh, the blower is you're just directing the air. And you'll notice the ink will move to the other side. Like if I put pressure here, all your ink moves over to here. If I put pressure there, the ink, the ink will go that direction too. And I'm just trying to get color on there and get it dried out and blend it first. And okay, I got a hair. That doesn't happen very often. Okay. I'm just moving it back and forth, just getting some color on there, trying to figure out if I want to add more color in the beginning. You want to check out comments and see if there's any questions? Sure. Okay. Now 
the aluminum light dyes do act a little bit different than alcohol inks will. Sometimes they'll leave a lot of deposits or have a hard time, almost looking like it, it beads up. But the next step usually helps take care of a lot of that. But they also like slick surfaces. So if you're using this with countertops, you'll do a, at least a skin coat of resin ahead of time. Doesn't have to be a lot, but it just has to be a nice smooth coat. Let it cure for at least 24 hours. And then I would always test your piece. Um, you know, just like when you're doing resin and any other colors, test the piece before you show the client. And the reason for that is different products behave differently over top of resin. And you want to make sure everything's working out. You see how that's kind of beating up a little bit there? That's what I'm referring to. And the alcohol dyes do that, but the alcohol inks do not. And it's just, you know, everything behaves, it has its own little quirks. You just learn to work around it. Right now we are definitely in what I would call the ugly stage. The ugly stage? The ugly stage. Sometimes things have an ugly stage. Is there usually an order with the colors? Like dark to light? It depends on what you your final piece looks like. If you want your final piece to be very delicate, um, obviously go ahead, uh, light with your colors. Uh, if you want it to be bold, apply them accordingly and just keep building. All right, we are gonna run a line of alcohol down the edge, but I'm also gonna add a little bit of green because, because I just feel like it. Maybe that's a just, yep. And what I'll do is I'll push it up and down. It reactivates the colors when it goes over top. But because for some reason when it goes up and down like this, it seems to smooth out those little beads. It is very humid where I'm at right now. We're expecting to have rain for about possibly three to four days. So it might be a little extra fussy with me tonight. Yep, definitely a little extra fussy. Okay, so I'm gonna run another bead right here. So why is humidity such a problem with it? It reacts to the alcohol dye, the alumilide dye. It's just one of the things that... You gotta watch out for? Yeah. Do I know why? It's just something about the moisture content. Gotcha, gotcha. So it's just a matter of working it until you are happy with the results. And you can just, like I said, you can continue building on it. You can even soften things up. I'm gonna let things dry for right now. I think. As I keep working it. All right. So what you can do is add a little bit of alcohol on the side and we can make some of this color come out this way. By going into just a little bit, activating the color, pushing it out, and going back and forth a couple times. And you'll see how the colors are starting to move. I can soften that line up a whole lot or just even a little bit depending on how much you want to work with it let's see i think i've got some gold yes so i will use 
Pinata Brass, which is an alcohol ink, but it's a metallic. And then what I do is I do dilute it down intentionally in the bottle, filling up the bottle halfway with just 91% alcohol, filling up the rest of it with the brass. And that way I know that when I'm applying it, I'm not adding too much of the brass because like most of the metallics, you guys have seen this before, can take over. And so this, I, I'm setting myself up to succeed. So I know it's not gonna take over, it's just gonna add little bits. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run some darker lines down the middle and add a little bit of brass to it at the same time. Definitely put some beads in here with this one. Okay, let's see. I add some of the dark line and I'm just adding it straight on top can you do it with a little bit of alcohol? Absolutely. But I am not wasting any gold. I just go for it. And so by moving it, it incorporates with that color. And it looks like it's something that you meant to happen. It gets more integrated into the piece. Oh yeah, the moisture's definitely up higher. I think it's harder doing this technique on a smaller piece than it is a larger piece. Have you, uh, this is from Bruce Anderson? Yeah. Have you tried colors like magenta on a black face? I have not, but I bet the resin art colors would work really well. However, they are still going to be a little bit on the transparent side, but they may leave, um, they might leave a really nice shimmer to it. But the, uh, the metallics on the, uh, like the brass will show up really well. Um, if I have not men messed around with the Illumilite white yet, that's my next thing I have to, to play with. So... Stay tuned on that one, because that on top of white could be interesting. So I'm just moving it up and down. I'm just trying to get it to look visually more appealing. There is a copper and there's also a silver that works really well and it adds like floating bits of metallic. Like a bright gold or 007 will do. So I'm going to add just this green to the side here so y'all can see what it looks like. So the alcohol, all it does is it allows the color to float until the alcohol evaporates, which gives you that watercolor look and that soft blend. Here you want to give me the camera there for a sec. So I wouldn't recommend doing all resin art colors, but I'm just going to see if I could tilt it from one side to the other so you can see the shimmer on that. So you can still get your nice pearly shimmers, but would that, that, but would recommend having some solid colors with it. They always seem to pull off a much nicer piece than to do like only shimmers. It seems to be too much. I always think a piece looks interesting, more interesting when you have a variety of textures. And then I'm going to do a line over here and just have it be the color and a tiny bit of brass. With some alcohol. 
So even just a little bit will bring in a, a really pretty piece. Do you think interference colors would work? Yes, and they do. Definitely? Yes. <laughs> that was also from Bruce. That was what? Also from Bruce. Ah, I think Bruce is going to be doing some experimenting. I was going to lighten that up just a little bit more. So just by adding a, a little bit of alcohol to the piece, even after I've added the colors, the Illuminite will go in and grab the board a little bit and kind of stain it. Um, so you, if you try to remove it, you're not going to get 100% removal. But by doing that, if you use it to your advantage, you can get these little undertones or complex undertones that marble kind of gives you. I would have a hard time doing that with alcohol inks, but it works really well with Illumilite dyes. Now, there is a um, color out there, um, Bruce, that I'll tell you about. Uh, Pinata has an opal that I have used in combination with Grumpy before, and there's actually a little bit more of a bonding um, element in opal. And the combination of the both of them, that and Grumpy or uh, Dalmatian Obsession, those are uh, Erica's uh, chameleon colors and the very light, it's almost like a super light glitter. I mean, just kind of like Diamond Dust is. And this helps bond with it. And you just need a little bit in your bottle with it. So you could try that. And it's gorgeous. All right, let me get another piece and I'm gonna do some light ones. Just so, because we've seen bold colors, I want to do something very light. And that's going to be hard for me, because I'm usually heavy-handed with color. Very heavy-handed. All right. Let me use the same colors. Sue Ashworth has a question. What about chameleon colors? Or will they just go black? Chameleon colors? Yeah. Oh, like grumpy just... and stuff? Yeah. Oh, it's the same kind of thing. Um, yeah, put it in with a little bit of opal. And for some reason, the bonding uh, element that they have in with opal, it makes it look really pretty. But it also works really well in having it bond to the paper. But this is just like barely any color. So you can get those hints of color in a custom color if your client wants it. And still get complex, like multi, just, just like what marble does. You know, there's just so many layers. It's hard to explain the layers to people. But I know you guys get it. About putting all the colors down there and you start moving them around, you can still see individual colors, but yet it also gives you that undertone and it is doing the whole beading thing again. So we are going to mess around with it a little bit more. Okay, I think I have an interference mixed up over here. So I am going to put some interference down, which will look like white until I start moving it around. Let's see. Oh, please don't tell me I'm lying. Uh-huh. That's so cool. There's none interference. Hmm. Okay. So I mixed up this color. This is blue plum. This one of the stone coat or polytech colors. And it has a plum color to it, but it also has a blue interference in it. So this is going to give you an idea, and it also does something a little wild. So there's a little surprise element here. I'm going to put down a little bit of alcohol just for it to move. And this is pretty much straight mica powders. Just soften it up. You know what, I'm going to give it 
just for interest. And I'm not sure if it's because of the mica powders being very lightweight, but this one does something interesting when it's completely dry. I wonder if it will do it on here. But like the mica powders will also give you texture too. You hold the dryer for a bit, you'll get those little ripples. And if you're careful, you can keep them. But again, those ripples will be very fragile because it will be just loose powder on top. Is it doing it? It is kind of doing it. Okay. Okay, you saw how dark it was before. For some reason, when this completely dries up, it gets really, really light. Now, I'm going to move around the piece so they can see the purple. Yeah, Tell I got it. it. I got it. Oh, you want to move it around? Mm-hmm. Can you see the purple? A little bit. So when it shifts around and you get that hint of like a bluish purple color, that's the interference that comes out. I'm not seeing it on the screen yet. Are you guys seeing the, the purple sheen? Hmm. Nope. All right, let me see if I can have it somewhere else. Interference what? Fragile, you said. It is very fragile. Okay, so I'm gonna run my finger across this. Oh. Yep. Oh, see, it comes up super easy. So that's why we spray it. All right, a little bit of alcohol. And this is interference. Now, I love using interference blue or gold. It just adds a little bit of, um, I don't know, luxuriousness to the piece. Have I ever used that word to describe a piece before that I've done? I don't know. But what's really cool about it is if you build colors on top of it, you can create just a really neat little undertone that kind of like catches your eye every time you turn around, but it's not smacking you in the face. It's just one of those things that's subtle, but always grabs you. All right, they should be able to see the blue already. So a chameleon shift, um, when you walk around a piece, one side you might see a blue and the other side you might see a green, but an interference shift will be like when you walk around the piece, you only see one shift of an additional color. And in this case, it's blue. All right, I'm going to grab this. Aha! It zoomed in. You zoomed it in? Okay, I will go slowly. What? Oh, thanks. So that is an interference blue. So Ghost Blue will do this. Color Passion has an interference blue, I believe. There's also an interference uh, blue pearl with resin art. And I think Ju Just Resin has an interference blue, but I'm not sure if Erica is carrying that. Okay. Let me see if I can put that back. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. I'm gonna go through all the papers. Ah. All right, we are going to do just a simple two colors. What colors are you using? This is that black violet color. And a gold. Just keeping it simple. Or oh, brass, I should say. I keep calling it gold. Gold essence? I was calling it gold essence just so I can keep track of it. And I wouldn't call it 007. But it's basically the pinata brass. Brass is a new gold. <laughs> you make yourself. Now, I, I think he, you used 007, correct? 
I know he's in the chat. He's always in the chat. I'll keep an eye out for him. <laughs> he's always there. You can always rely on Keith. Yep. And uh, Just Resin Bright Gold is very similar. Do not use the resin paste. Now the pre-dissolved paste from Resinar is completely fine, but like you get a, a the liquid just resin paste, mm -mm, not so much. All right, I'm gonna let the rest of that dry like it is, and I'm just gonna play with lightening up the ends ends here. So you're seeing the purple really come out when it's just one color. And all I use is a little travel dryer to do my um, my work with. Some people use an embossing gun, which is kind of like an in-between of a heat gun and a blow dryer as far as temperature. But I find the travel dryer works just just fine for me. Oh, uh, Vicky says something. Yeah? Are you going to use silver? I'm all about gold, but curious how the silver would look. Can I have silver mixed up? Not sure if this is. Uh oh. We're, do about, do. we're about to add silver if we have it. Maybe. But I'm not sure is whether or not this is pinata silver. So we'll find out. And I think it's a weaker mix. Yeah, it's definitely weaker. No. I might be able to get a couple drops straight out of the bottle. If we're, if we're gonna... Uh oh. Find out. Always close your bottles before you shake them. Pro tip. Oh, it was closed. Uh oh. I have a problem. Okay. Well, I am now Silver Girl. Well, we're definitely using silver now. It's in there. Okay. Let's make this work. Oh, wow. Happy accident. I went from Smurf to Silver Girl. <laughs> silver Surfer. <laughs> <laughs> Vicky's like, sorry. <laughs> she didn't do it. <laughs> but I'm putting another cap on that one. Woo. So the silver does look like it's sinking a little bit more than the uh, brass does. And it's going down in here and leaving great deposits. But there is some floating silver bits. It's just not a lot. And it's not like I didn't add enough. Snicker, snicker. Right? Oh my gosh, I need silver. No, I think you need more. Do you think I need more silver? <laughs> Hush. Alright. Well, blue interference to the piece. And then first, we're going to shower when we're done. No. <laughs> Yeah, it's definitely not behaving as well as it would normally do because of the uh, moisture in there. But I am able to get some pretty blends still. You want to move them around on this, this particular ribbon that I just laid out? Because that's got the interference in it. Yeah. All right, let's salvage this piece. I'm a hot mess. All right, we will try and add more silver into that very spot. Maybe. Hey, 
Hey, I would be good experiment along with the rest of us. Definitely, because you never know what you're going to find out by accident, right? If you don't try. So, interference is a great way of adding a surprise to a piece. I think Keith learned something. What's that? Watching you, I realize, I'm realizing I don't need to add clear alcohol each time I want to add a color. That is true! Here, here this is also, okay, Keith, you ready for this one? I'm calling you out specifically. Alright, so with the, gold, with the little needle tip applicator, I'm barely squeezing on it, but I can put a thin line. And because of the alcohol in the solution, they pretty much stay thin. And we just, and it's probably already dry. But you can leave a little accent trail if you want to. And it still comes off as transparent, which is wild. If you wanted more gold, obviously you would go just put the brass into one of these needle applicator bottles just so you have more control. Because the rounded tip makes it hard to have control. Fun? I think this works out pretty good. Let's see. It's all messing with it. Yes. And try to get into a habit of every time you pick it up, even though I just didn't do that, um, go ahead and give it a quickie shake. Just like when you pick up resin, you always give it a stir. Same kind of reason. Because the color will sink. And it's up to you when you want to stop and when you don't want to stop. But um, as always, videotape yourself. Talk to yourself when you're doing it. So that way you know, oh, I added too much. Oh, it looked like that. I should have stopped at, at this area or this time. Or that last minute color you decided to throw in there, like a whole bunch of silver. <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't help myself. <laughs> you know, to either do that or not do that the next time. And if you want to bring in a little bit of color, just backtrack it this way, grab some color, and then bring it on forward, and you can carry that line out again. Now, Keith has come up with a great idea, and I'm going to see if I can pick it up without depositing silver on it again. <laughs> I'm laughing at myself. Um, he created a resin board where you just put just some kind of uh, straight finish on it. I decided to do a marble, melted marble in the background and had some accent colors on here. But he then took the, let the piece cure and then put UTC on top of it. Um, I have a matte on mine. I think he has a gloss on his. But what it allows you to do is to have a practice board. So you can actually see it with a resin design in the background. There's no reason why you couldn't if you want it. If you want to have a straight flat color, then have a straight flat color. Uh, if you want to do a tone on tone, like just barely a white marbly kind of look, do that or like the black like um, uh, Bruce is talking about. It's a great way to play with your colors and then when you're done, just flood it with alcohol, clean it off, start over again. So do not do that for your final piece though. This is just practice. That way you don't have to keep buying boards. <laughs> I gotta save money somewhere, right? <laughs> All right, so I have put together a book that shows. Aha! Of course, when I went and started mixing colors, I couldn't just stop at just one or two, three colors. Mm -hmm. I have over a hundred colors in here, and I created a recipe, basically for each one. I know you guys get the recipes, but you don't eat it. I have to say that just for you know safety but I made it so that you could print out the one individual page take it out to the studio so that your messy paws you don't have to worry about messing up your book right um, but up here it'll have the amount of colors 
uh, drops you use to create this color. So this is the color, uh, I guess you could say at its purest level. Obviously you can build it and get it darker. This is a swatch you got from dark to light. And obviously you can go much lighter depending on how far you want to push it. And then these are the brands that you need to pull to create it. And then always I've got the bottom here is the same, uh, same bit of information, just as a quick reference guide in case you need it. So I'm going to be working on some additional books. Uh, I'm going to have some color combinations that work really well together. Uh, possibly a metallic book and uh, resin art. I'm going to be combining some resin art colors as well. But these are digital books that are on my website, clairelawrence.com. So go check it out and download it. And I'll be adding to it occasionally. I'm not sure how long I'll be doing that, but obviously I'm going to be making more colors. So go check that out. And definitely check out Rhonda's uh, site. She's got more product classes coming up, I think, in July. Um, and hopefully I'm going to be there helping out with that one. And all kinds of cool people show up. Keith shows up on a regular basis. I know Mitch does. Um, I try to show up and sometimes Erica can show up. A lot of times Erica can show up. Um, so there's a wealth of information that you've got. And also you usually have a lot of professionals that show up to the pro class. I encourage that one probably the most because people who are investing into the countertops business, this is just furthering education. Even if you've been using the product, you are going to pick something up. And you're also bringing the wealth of experience and knowledge that you have into the class. And we're going to get a little gold nuggets out of it as well. So definitely check out her, her website for the classes as well as obviously the supplies. And, oh no, I'm trying to figure out the, no, I'm not even going to say the same because I'm going to screw it up. <laughs> mm. Is it we do the test? No, that is Erica's. Oh, my bad. <laughs> And that's a finish all on its own. <laughs> and that's a finish all on its own. There you go. At any rate, y'all go be creative, and I will see you later. Ah, uh, don't be scared. Don't, don't be scared. Move forward and be creative. That's it. Thank you. I needed a little cue. And that can be a finish all on its own. Oh, my. I'm going to get in trouble. <laughs> later, y'all.